Hey, Ruth. Do, can you see me? Hi, Mark. Yes, I can see you. Cool, cool. Hey, how's it going? Hey, thanks for asking. Um, but lately, I've been feeling sort of distressed. I'm feeling a lot of different emotions from looking at the news. You know, um, the pandemic is one thing, but I'm, I'm seeing a lot of um, a lot of distress with different races and uh, a lot of yeah. news showing a lot of negativity and it just, it's disheartening. So I have a lot of emotions about that. Um, I'm noticing that there's been a lot of uh, racism shared on the news, um, just showing that there's a lot of uh, people feeling a lot of pain because some races are treated differently than others. Use the word racism. Um, can you define that word for me? Racism is the false story, the false narrative that one race is better than the other. So when I referred back to the news, um, what I meant was I'm seeing a lot of people, specifically black people, that's one race, feeling a lot of pain and other big emotions because of the racism that they're experiencing. I, can you also define the word privilege? Absolutely. So privilege is the unearned advantages that someone receives by identifying or just being born into a specific group. So. No. Okay. So, so yeah, you, um, you sent me that email and you talked about the invisible backpack activity. I actually have my backpack right here. Um, and I want to practice this activity with you. So I have um, a couple boards in here. Um, so this first one says, um, I can easily find toys, books, dolls, video games, et cetera, featuring people of my own race. And I would agree with that. I would say most of the toys in the media that I see um, is geared towards um, white people. And those are the people that are represented. Um, what, what's, your, what's your experience? Yeah, that's that's a that's an interesting one because in my experience, uh, it's a little bit different. It's much more difficult to find books, find characters, um, superheroes, dolls, action figures um, that re represent my race. And it can be disheartening, and it could feel like we don't matter. Okay, so what I'm hearing you say is you're not um, people of your skin color aren't you don't necessarily see that represented as much as I might see that for my skin color. Um, that sounds like that could be um, kind of frustrating and uh, disenfranchising. That's, that's good for me to be aware of as a white person who, okay, I have another, uh, another one here. Um, uh, I am never asked to speak for all the people in my group. Um, and I would agree with this sentiment. Um, I don't feel like I am asked to always speak uh, for all other white people. It just doesn't come up. Um, what is, how is that for you? But for those who are in predominantly white settings and they are not white, um, it can be very intimidating and uncomfortable to be called out um, because you're one or um, the only one or one of a very few amount of people of color in that room. And it's like I said, very intimidating if you're asked to speak for the whole race. And it's something that a lot of people that I know express um, a, a big amount of discomfort with. I can only speak from my own perspective and I can only speak for my feelings, my opinions. I mean, and curiosity is great, uh, but there are ways to come about it. And it starts off with coming from a, a, a very genuine space you're empathetic and you're just you're wondering about this person that's again that's okay um but please do it privately and ask about you know my feelings and my opinions about things and not generally speaking um about the whole race because again i can't do that what are some things that i can do as a white person to do better how can i help have these conversations in a better way that's a great question um, because you having your privileges, you're, you're, you're aware that there are some things that you can do to kind of help support me. So you're doing one of those things right now and that's listening to me. 
And that shows me that you, you care, my feelings and my thoughts matter to you. Another thing is it's showing that you empathize. You can do that by listening and you could do that by other ways, but empathizing with me, that's again, showing that you care and showing that I matter and you want to support in any way you can. Um, another thing, Mark, is acknowledging that we are different. And although we want to say that, you know, we are we are one and everyone is treated equally. Sometimes you just have to acknowledge that we're not actually. And that's kind of the hard truth. And you acknowledging that you have these different privileges, different from mine, um, that shows me that you're aware, you're acknowledging that um, there needs to be some change and that you're curious to find ways to help support me. So I really appreciate that Miss Tessima took some time today to help me think about how to better have some of these uncomfortable conversations because they're important conversations to have and I don't want to avoid them because I don't want to be uncomfortable or I don't want to make somebody uncomfortable. Um, I, one thing I need to recognize, I'm going to make mistakes as I have these conversations. That's part of, it's part of how we get better is through making mistakes. And then I think the, th the three really critical things that she said, uh, listen, we do a lot of yammering and talking. Let's listen. Um, one of our access life skills is empathize, uh, empathy. And so we want to empathize, um, with people. Um, and that's not pitying. It's not, um, having some sort of false, um, connection with them, but that's really, um, empathizing, thinking through what is their perspective and what is their experience and how are they feeling about it? Uh, and then that last one, uh, recognizing our differences. So it's not, you know, it's not about saying we're all the same and we're all we're all the same. And why is this happening? We're this, we're not. We're different. We have different experiences. And like it or like it or not, our skin color um, has dictated what some of those experiences are. Um... So just to briefly wrap up, um, all of this is simply part of what is a larger ongoing discussion. Um, there is a very obvious need for change and there's a need for students here at Access Academy to be a part of that systemic change. And we can do this through having these difficult, uncomfortable discussions, listening and empathizing um, uh, with one another, um, and being open to the discomfort that will bring about understanding and the change that's needed right now. So. I'll just leave you with that. We will continue these discussions going forward. So um, be well, Access Academy Adams. You guys are awesome.